Welcome to John Gets Games. Today, I'll be reviewing Baron Park. This game was designed by Phil Walker Harding, and in this game, each player is competing to build the best bear exhibit park that they can by nestling these puzzly shaped tiles together onto their boards. While they're doing this, they'll be competing in several different races, not only to finish out their boards before their opponents, but even the puzzle pieces they grab themselves are going to be worth less points as the game goes on. And lastly, there are some optional mission objectives that players can race towards as well, everything giving them points the earlier they do them. First, I'll explain how the game plays, and then I'll jump into my review. Here we have Baron Park midway through setup. You'll notice we have this big foldable board right here. We put that in the middle of the table and it has shapes on it which show us where we should put all of the tiles down. We can start over here with the basic uh, resources. It is worth noting there's a slight typo on here saying with less than four players, you're supposed to put less of these playgrounds down. You're actually supposed to put less of these roads down, but I'm gonna set it up for four players right now. Next, we have the four bear house locations, and you'll notice with these tiles, they have victory points on them, but the number of them is going to decrease as you play the game. So we want to make sure these are all in order, and then we're going to put them on the board. Once again, you put less of these down with fewer people in the game, as is printed on the board, but I'll put them all down for now. And lastly, this large section holds all of the bear exhibits. There is only one of each of these types of tiles, and we're going to go ahead and put them down into all of the spots that match. Next, you'll notice this set of bear statues. They go in ascending victory point order, and you don't use all of them unless you are playing a four-player game. And lastly, we have down here, these are optional achievements that you can try to grab while you're playing. There are 10 available. You will randomly choose three of them, and all of these are stacks of three victory point tiles with the amount getting less as you go through the stack. Each player now takes one of the starting park tiles. you notice they are all different. And then we grab these two sets of equal sized extension tiles and put those in the middle. Lastly, each player is going to get a starting tile and the type is going to vary based on player order. If we were the start player, we'd get this one by one outhouse tile. And now we can start playing the game. On your turn, all you do is take one of your available tiles. <laughs> we only have one at the moment. And you put it down somewhere legally onto your park. At the moment in our park, we only have this one tile, and for the initial placement, it can go anywhere on this tile except for this cordoned off spot. This is a standard rule for the game. You're never allowed to cover up these places. You have to put the bear statues there, and that is it. So uh, when it comes to the sound house, we can put it down on any of the other spots. And for instance, we could go here, and we've covered up this green wheelbarrow icon. After you have placed a tile, you then evaluate all of the icons that you covered up. So let's see what this one does for us. When we look out onto the central board, we notice that on the left-hand side, we have a little Polaroid picture with that green wheelbarrow. That means with this action, we can take any of these four types of tiles. For instance, we might want to grab this uh, three-section angled river piece right here. With all of our covered up icons evaluated, our turn is now over and play will continue clockwise. Once it is back to us on our turn, we now can place this tile and we have a new restriction which is common for the rest of the game and that is that this tile has to be at least uh, one segment adjacent to a previously placed tile. So we could go ahead and put it here and you'll notice we covered up this white cement mixer as well as this group of surveyors. When we look back to the main board, we see the white Polaroid section is associated with these four bear houses. And on our second turn, I think it's highly likely that a couple of these will have been taken already. So we now have the choice to take one of these top ones. We could, of course, grab this Gobi Bear one right here or the Koala Bear up here for seven points each. These are worth less points, but we might actually want to grab the Polar Bear one because we have this public mission in this particular play of the game to be the first person to have three of these Polar Bear tiles. This is probably why at least one of these would have been taken and also probably why we'd want to grab it right now. At this point, our turn is not quite done because we also covered up this surveying team right here. This allows us to put an extension into our park, and for these, you cannot rotate them around. They have to stay in line with the park that we have. It's also worth noting that you're never allowed to have an extension go out so that it is in front of the entrance to your park. So we get to pick from this one or this one. I think maybe we would grab this one here, and now we can add it either here, here, or here. That's totally fine with us. And for future extensions, we can also keep going out in any of these directions as long as it doesn't go this direction in front of the park, so you don't have to have a 2x2 two two grid or anything like that. And once we have taken this, it not only uncovered a new one for our opponents, but we have now finished our turn, and we have more places to put tiles into our park. Let's now say that it's our turn again, and we can now place this tile down onto our board. Remember, if you have multiple tiles, you get to choose one of them and place them down. So for instance, we might place this like that so that we cover up this orange excavator, and those icons only show up on the board extensions that you grab. 
Looking back to the central board for the last time, we see that both of these sections are encapsulated in this orange excavator spot. So that means we can grab any of these. And if you remember from the setup, there is only one of each of these. So I think we'd likely want to grab this one for the polar bears because, well, we're working towards that polar bear achievement and this one fits pretty well into our park. Also, you notice that the victory points vary on these and eight points is the most you can get for this type of tile. In order to show the next thing, let's go ahead and do a little bit of fast forwarding. So it comes back to our turn and we might want to place this just like that because, well, in order to actually get that achievement, we have to have two of these polar bear tiles in play on our boards first before anybody else. When we put this down, we cover up a green whale barrel and a survey team. We could go ahead and take this tile right here for the survey team, put it up there. And then for the wheelbarrow, we can grab this one by two, which is a children's park. And now we can on our next turn, take this one, place it just like that, which covers up a white cement mixer. This is gonna give us access to those houses again, and we might want to grab this polar bear exhibit by doing this. On the following turn, we could then take this and place it down just like this. It's gonna give us access to not only a green wheelbarrow, but also a uh, white cement truck, which gives us another bear house. And the moment this comes down, we would go ahead and take the topmost achievement. Now, it's possible that we were not actually the first, and if that's the case, when we do this, we'll get less points, but I think it's likely in this case we would get the eight points, and this, of course, means that three people can get this achievement. Uh, of course, you're not allowed to do the same achievement more than once, and in a four-player game, that means one person is definitely not going to get each achievement in the game. In order to finish out this example, we'd have to get our green whale barrel and our uh, white cement truck worth of stuff. So we could maybe take this outhouse and this koala bear exhibit right here because it's worth good points. And on our next turn, we could take this outhouse and place it right there. And now something special happens because this is the first time that we have completely filled in one of our boards. Now, you'll notice that we still have lots of open space around here, but you just look to the 4x4 grid on the isolated board. And as long as everything except for this cordoned off area is filled in, you can immediately build a bear statue there. In order to do this, you simply take the highest value bear statue from the middle of the table, and then you fill in this cordon off area with it, and it's going to be worth that number of points for you at the end of the game. At this point, I've taught you all of the basics for the game. Play is going to keep going around until one player has gotten three of their extensions, and they have completely filled in every spot on their boards. At that moment, everybody else will get one more turn, and then everyone will count up all the points they have on all of their tiles as well as their objectives, and the person with the most points is the winner. Let's now begin the review for Baron Park by starting with a few positive points. And the first of these relates to the great race management and planning that you're doing as you are playing the game. You are not only considering how close you are to completing one of your square uh, blocks on your board to grab those uh, high value uh, statue tiles while they're still worth a high amount of points, but you're also considering the actual bear houses because the sooner you get in to grab those tiles, the more points they'll be worth. But odds are good that the tile that is associated with one of the objectives that you are also looking at is probably going to get depleted more. So now you have to think, do I want to go after that objective like my opponents are? Or maybe I just do something else and I grab a high point one of the houses that they are all neglecting. And then you, of course, also have the um, ex the exhibits on that one side of the board. There's only one of each of those as opposed to having multiples of the rest. And so grabbing the right one at the right time is going to be very important for filling everything out. So what this means is this game looks pretty simple, but on your turn, you're spinning a bunch of plates and you're trying to figure out how many races do I realistically have a shot at winning? Because in order to do well at this game, you're going to have to win some of those races. You're going to have to get maybe some of, the, of those objectives, but if you ignore the objectives, you better get some of those really high value statues down onto your board and just all of these things are all happening simultaneously for all the players. And this means that you're looking down at your board and you're trying to plan ahead everything you want to do and the order in which the tiles are going to go down. But you're also looking out at the boards for your opponents and trying to see just how close they are to getting to some of these other races. Now, it does mean that if you are in the lead on some of these races, you can feel somewhat comfortable. You can look down and see that you have two of the uh, panda tiles down on your area and there's an objective to be the first person with three and nobody else uh, has more than one, well, then you could go and do something else, then compete in a different race until another player grabs their second panda um, uh, tile and now you the heat is back on to you to try and jump back into the lead of the race. So you really don't want to just do one of these races. You will not win unless you compete in lots of them and I found that very interesting. 
For positive number two, I'd like to briefly discuss in a little more detail those achievements that you can optionally put into the game. Now, I've played every game with these achievements, and I think that they are a great addition to all of the things that we're thinking about that I already just covered in the positive point number one. But specifically, I also like the variety that they bring to the gameplay, and I'll talk about variety in a little more depth later, but there are ten of these achievements, which means that the uh, one play to the next does have a good feeling of freshness because those achievements will definitely affect how you play the game. In one game, you you might be actually stalling out building any of your statues because when you uh, place a tile down that completes two statues at once, you complete a 10 point achievement. And in another game without that there, then people are going to be much more focused on grabbing those statues. And uh, in some of them, it's all about having tiles connect to each other. So you really have to think about to the future about how you're going to be um, planning these things. But in others, it's just have this number of this type of tile down in your player area. And all these things are kind of randomized together. You only pull three out of the 10 each game. And it's just a really wonderful addition to the game. And I think without these achievements, it would be a significantly less fun game for me. For positive number three, I just want to say that I love how easy this game is to teach and to understand for new players. It might not seem like that elegant of a game when you first look at the table and you see all these big stacks of tiles all over the place, but when you actually get to the rules themselves, it is very elegant. You teach this game so quickly. You know, all you're really doing on your turn is taking a tile you already own, putting it somewhere on your board that touches the previous tile you have. If you covered up any icons, then you take those associated uh, tiles from the player board and your turn is done. And I just, I've already taught most of the game right there. I know there's obviously some uh, extra specifics that you need to go into with the races and whatnot, but the kernel of this game is so simple and elegant. And I love that it um, flowers into uh, some pretty interesting gameplay decisions. And I'm not used to seeing that big of a disparity. When I see a game, when I first uh, saw the game and uh, heard about the rule set, I assumed it would be a much uh, lighter, less interesting experience than it actually ended up being. Let's now move into a couple of neutral points. And the first of these relates to the planning that I talked about at the beginning of the review. Now, I love the planning that comes into this game of figuring out where the tiles are gonna go and how they're gonna nestle together. But it is worth mentioning that this game can really start to tax your brain power with spatial reasoning. And if you are not inherently okay at spatial reasoning, you will probably find yourself at a disadvantage to players who are because this game really is about planning many moves in the future. You see that one uh, piece in your brain and then you lock this other one in there and that one slides in there and that'll just barely fill that in. So you grab that. And then when you get that board and you pull all these things in and realistically, the only thing you can't guarantee is grabbing those big um, exhibit tiles on the other end of the player board, as well as guaranteeing the specific expansions, because if players get to the expansion before you, then that one that would have been great is going to go away. But the given puzzle with those squares that you already have in front of you, you can plan lots of turns ahead. And for some people, that's really satisfying. For me, it definitely has been. But for others, this might actually be a turnoff because that planning ahead is somewhat necessary to do well in the game, and it's not going to be uh, easy for everyone. And now for neutral number two, I just want to briefly state that this theme is completely pasted on for this game. And in general, I don't really care uh, about the thematic integration. I mean, if the theme really works well with the mechanics, that will help a game, but it never hurts a game for me, which is why this is a neutral point. But I have never once felt while playing the game or at the end of the game that I actually built a theme park with bear exhibits and whatnot in it. This really is just a puzzle game that feels highly abstract. It's about racing towards all of these different objectives and and the tiles happen to have very good art on them. And you can see little polar bears and little goby bears and all that kind of stuff, but you're not building any cohesive system in front of you and the rules themselves don't lend themselves towards your park making any sense whatsoever. You're gonna have food truck lanes that run uh, straight into rivers on both sides. You're gonna have those rivers dumping inner tube people right into polar bear exhibits where they probably get eaten alive. There's just all these things that do not make sense from a thematic perspective that are totally fine mechanically and will give you lots of points. So if that matters to you, then keep that in mind. But for me, I don't really care. We've now found ourselves in the negative section and I only have one point to mention. And it's almost a nitpick, and that is that I find the setup for this game to be quite a chore, as well as I think the breakdown of it. When I'm actually playing the game, I'm having a great time with all these decisions I'm making, but when I go to set up the game, especially if the people I'm uh, playing with are not super familiar with it, it takes a while to get all these tiles out of these bags so that you stack all the exhibits over here, and then you have the houses, which have to be put in a specific order, and then based on player count, you're gonna pull some of them out. There's also a typo in the first edition of the game, so with the basic, um, the tiles themselves, it says to take out certain tiles that you shouldn't and they're supposed to be swapped around. None of these things are hard, but they just take time and it means you just have this big mess. It almost feels like a mini game uh, before you start playing the game of just getting all of these puzzle pieces stacked correctly. 
And then when you get to the end of the game, you are going to score all your points, which is a little bit of a chore too, because you're adding a bunch of different stuff together to get your final score. And then you have to put them all back into the bags that you've decided. Now, obviously part of this has to do with my own um, organization structure that I have in the box, but I don't think there are too many significantly better ways to organize it. And it does not uh, kill this game for me by any means, but I have found it to be a bit of a chore in the setup and the takedown. Let's now discuss the variability for Baron Park, and I think that it is definitely greater than I expected going into the game, and most of that rides on the back of the optional achievements that you can play with. If those were not in the game, I think that it would be about average, about the amount that I expected with a polyomino puzzle piece style game. I've played several of these with a Cottage Garden patchwork, where in those games, you don't have these achievements that you're going to. They really are just about trying to nestle things together as efficiently as possible. And I've enjoyed the uh, those games, and I've thought they've had an okay amount of variability in them. But when you bring the achievements in, and I've talked about them at reasonable length um, in the positive points already, so I won't hear. But I just think that they really increase the variability of the game. You only pick three out of the ten total every single time you play, and they are not all very, uh, simple. Some of them are simple achievements, but other ones do significantly alter the way that players are going to be competing in these races from one game to the next, and I just really love their addition, and I think the variability overall for the game is pretty darn good because of it. Baron Park plays two to four players, and I've only played three and four, and I feel like the two-player game is likely fine. The three-player game is great, but four is really the best way to play this game because that is where all of the races that you are competing with are tightest. Uh, that's because you are going to use every single one of the expansion tiles, so the earlier you get to them, the more likely you are to grab one that works well with your setup. It also means that the um, exhibit tiles that are out in the main board, well, there's going to be greater competition to go ahead and grab those because you don't pull less of those um, off the board for the smaller player counts. So at four, those really feel best, and you do pull out some of the uh, house tiles as well as the uh, basic tiles on the lower player counts, which is, I think, why three felt just fine. But I think four definitely has the edge for the maximum amount of tension that I really enjoy in the game. In conclusion, I've played Baron Park four times at this point, and I've really enjoyed every one of those plays. And if I'm being honest, this game has exceeded the expectations I had going in for it because, well, I really enjoyed Patchwork, which is one of the more original uh, polyomino uh, puzzly uh, piece kind of games, but that was two player only. And then I played Cottage Garden last year, which played up to four players, and I thought it was okay. It was an enjoyable time, but I never really sought it out. And so I kind of figured that Baron Park would be a similar um, uh, situation to Cottage Garden. But once I actually got to play it for the first time, I found that I was really wrong there because while this game is about putting these pieces together and that is satisfying just like it was in Cottage Garden and Patchwork, in this game you have all of these races that you're competing for and you don't really have much pressure for the actual acquisition of the tiles. And in Patchwork and Cottage Garden, that really was where the tension was. Like, will I be able to get the right tile for this moment? Whereas in Baron Park, for the most part, Every tile piece is available to you, except, I guess, for the funky-shaped um, exhibition tiles, but you're only going to get three of those. The vast majority of the tiles are just in big stacks. The only question is, how many points are you going to get for those tiles, and how quickly are you going to go ahead and grab them, and how quickly can you actually achieve the various uh, goals that you're going towards with the puzzle, uh, with the uh, statues, and with the achievements and all that stuff. And I didn't really see that in those other games, which means that this game looks really similar to those other games, but it does not feel like it when I'm actually playing it. And I just really love the tension of competing with all these races. And realistically, my only uh, issue with the game is that the setup and the teardown and the point uh, addition is a bit of a chore, but that really does feel like nitpicking. Uh, at the end of the day, I strongly recommend this game. It's been really fun for me, and I think every single person I played with has gone away with it uh, from their first play with the same reaction I did, where they say, wow, I like that more than I thought I would, and I thought I was going to like it. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything I have to say about it. I recommend Bear Park. It's a fun time. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel through Patreon, including all of these producer-level pledges. If you too would like to directly support the channel, you could do so at patreon.com slash johngetsgames, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you'd like to see more in-depth board game reviews like this one, as well as full game playthroughs and vlogs, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.